تجربے خدا میں اہل بیت پاک سے گستاخیاں بے باقیہ اہل بیت پاک سے گستاخیاں بے باقیہ لعنت اللہ علیکم دشمنان اہل بیت نہ ہوتے گر حسین ابن علی اس پیاس کے بھوکے نکل آتی زمین سے نکل آتی زمین کربلا سے نہر جنت کی شہید ناز رکھ دیتا ہے گردن آب خنجر پہ جو موجے باڑ پر آ جاتی ہیں دریائے الفت کی کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی زہرا ہے کلی جس میں حسین اور حسن پھول زہرا ہے کلی جس میں حسین اور حسن پھول بائے دگری صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے کرم ہو میں ہمیں شائع اسپیشلی حضور سے دی سرکار غوث حاضم سرکار اعلیٰ حضرت حاجر الدین اللہ سرکار اعلیٰ حضرت حضور اسلام مفتی اعظم حضور صدر شریعہ حضور مفصل اعظم حضور تاج شریعہ اینڈ ٹو دا بلیسنگ آف حضور محدی سکیر ان قائد ملت ان دعاز آف مائی بلاوڈ پیرنٹس الحمد للہ آئی واز ایبل ٹو ٹاک ٹو یو فار دا لاسٹ ٹین نائٹس on the events leading to the Battle of Karbala and last night we discussed very briefly the Battle of Karbala which was a very emotional discussion and it is a very emotional discussion to present uh, <clears throat> for the heart is unable to give with you when you try to control it in a time like that May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever I have attempted to discuss and accept whatever you have listened to during this time and may Allah reward us both by His grace and His mercy to the Sadhguru Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Tonight is the eve of the 11th of Muharram which means that it is also the eve of Gyarwi Sharif as well So tonight I will discuss as I mentioned last night the events that took place after the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and when the noble Imam was made shaheed and his jism mubarak was trampled upon by horses and even his mubarak clothing was removed and the enemies shared it amongst themselves they looted the, I said yesterday the, the, the tents and the camps of the Ahl al-Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They stole all the jewelry that was being worn by the wives and the daughters and the, and the, and the young princesses of the Ahl al-Bayt. And they did not even leave a single earring in one of the ears of the women of the Ahl al-Bayt. This was their, their, their hatred which they were displaying. And this was their jihalat and this was their shaitani behavior that they were portraying. after making Imam Hussain, Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and Shaheed. I'm going to continue from there today and last night we shared the book, the translation of the book Ayna Ikayamat from which I've been trying to discuss the entire events of Karbala throughout these 10 days and again today. Uh, and in that I included uh, discussions from other authentic sources as well. But again today I'm going to discuss tonight's discussion from the Ayna Ikayamat and it, if you've already received the book it will be very much like what you read what you will be reading in the book. But I'm discussing this because I ex- mentioned last night that I will discuss this issue and I will also try and attempt to explain a uh, few important points that come out from this and important lessons that we learn from this entire battle of Karbala and the events that led to it. Now, after Imam Hussain Radiallahu Anhu was made shaheed, the evil Shimr, we know was one of the, 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 the commanders of the, the army of Yazid and Ibn Ziyad. He was so hell-bent that he wanted to even make Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Zain al-Abidin Shaheed was the only surviving male member in that convoy of the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but those around him even those from his own camp uh, stopped him from doing this I'm not going to go into the details you can read the details in the kitab in the, in the, in the Ayin al-Qayamut and, and if you have not downloaded it already uh, you should download it and you should read it and download it with this niyyah that you are downloading it and reading it in the love of Imam Hussain because this is such a Mubarak kitab that Ustaz Zaman wrote 
that we will learn so much more from compared to what I've spoken to you about and what you've heard before about the Battle of Karbala. There are details in it and there are references in it of their very authentic books. So please uh, do read Ayn Ayat uh, the reflection from the day of resurrection, which is the English translation of it. And uh, do make dua for me and my parents and my family as well and the entire the Sunnah when you do read the book, inshallah. Through the Patullah Masulli Ala Sayyidina wa Nabiya Namaulana Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Maulana Muhammad wa ashabihi wa barik wa So as I said, Shimon was hell-bent. He wanted to even make Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Zainullah Abdin Shaheed. But people like Humayd bin Muslim stood in front of him and did not allow him to make Imam, Imam Zainullah Abdin radiallahu anh Shaheed. Uh, it is reported that after this happened, then the Sari Mubarak of Hadrat Sayyidina, his Jismi Mubarak was just left there. They just left the bodies of the martyrs there without even giving them uh, 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 the, the, the necessary uh, burials. They just left them on, on the plains of Karbala, Allahu Akbar, and, and, and the blessed heads of Sayyidina Imam Hussain, radiallahu and the rest of the shahada uh, were sent to Ibn Ziyad. And the person who took the Sari Mubarak of Imam Hussain, radiallahu was the evil Khuli bin Yazid. So when he got to Kufa, he was unable to give the Sar Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an to Ibn Ziyad or present it to, according to him he was presenting it before Ibn Ziyad and uh, he was unable to do that so he took the head to his house and when he went to his house as I said I'm being brief about it uh, he went to his house and he said to his wife that I have brought for you something which will be the means of great wealth for you for the rest of your life, you will become wealthy. I brought such a gift for you. So she asked him, what did you bring? And he said, I brought for you the head of Hussein. When she heard this, when she heard this, that her husband is saying that he brought as a gift for her, the head of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu an, the grandson of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she cursed him. She cursed Shimmer and she said, people bring gold and silver and wealth. And you have brought the head of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, I swear an oath by Allah. She took a qasam and she said that I will never live with you from this day on. She left him immediately. But that night, she made intention to leave him immediately. But because that night the Sari Mubarak was in a house, because that night the Mubarak head of Sayyidina Imam Hussein was in a house, the entire night, she made a ziyarat of the Sar Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu And she says, that noble lady says that the entire night I made ziyarat of the head of Hadrat Imam Hussain radiallahu an. And I saw that throughout that night a powerful light, a nur was emanating from the Sari Mubarak of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu an. And the nur would emanate and it will go into the heights of the sky. And I saw white birds that would go around the Mubarak head of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu Allahu Akbar. Even after leaving the dunya, this is the karamat of the sacred head, the Sari Mubarak of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an, that after his shahadat, nur was flowing from his Sari Mubarak going up towards the skies. And this was in fact the light that was descending from the skies and the light that was going up from the Sari Mubarak of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an. It is stated that finally when Shimmer, the evil, the wicked one, finally when he brought the Sari Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu an and the other shuhada to Ibn Ziyad, narration state that blood began to flow from the doors and the walls of his house. Still, they did not have get any hosh after seeing this. When he took the Sarah Mubarak, it was some narration said it was presented in a tray to him, the holy head and the sacred head of Imam Hussain, radiallahu ta'ala. And he started to knock on the teeth of Imam Hussain, radiallahu with the cane, Allahu Akbar. And he was saying, without any remorse, he was saying, I have never seen anyone so beautiful. Look at how beautiful his teeth are. Indeed, he had never seen anybody more beautiful than Imam Hussain radiallahu but this was his way of mockery this was his disrespect that he was striking the teeth of Imam Hussain radiallahu with the cane it is stated that at that time in his court the sahabi of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid ibn Arkam radiallahu was present 
when he saw this he could not bear what was happening he in a very harsh and angry manner he said to ibn ziyad he commanded him to move his cane away move his stick away from the blessed teeth and the lips mubarak of hazrat imam husain radiyallahu an and he said to ibn ziyad that for a long period i saw rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kissing those mubarak lips and i saw him showering mahabba and love upon them and hazrat sayyidina zaid ibn arkam radiyallahu an when he said this he began to weep uncontrollably because he could not bear that the sar mubarak of imam husain was in front the grandson of the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam who him with his eyes used to see the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam showing showing so much mahabba to had been made shaheed and here this evil man is striking the mubarak teeth of hazrat imam husain radiyallahu an with a cane with so much of disrespect when ibn ziyad saw what hazrat said heard what hazrat zaid ibn arkam said and when he saw what how hazrat ibn arkam was was weeping he this evil person he looks at hazrat said zaid ibn arkam radiyallahu anhu he says may you weep forever in other words may you this be this time to weep if he said if you had not become old and senile and frail i would have cut off your head allahu akbar look at the look at the 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 the, 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 the dushmani for the sahaba ikram look at the dushmani for the ahl bayt of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it stated that when zaid ibn arkam radiyallahu anhu saw this happening he got up and he started to walk away and as he walked away he loudly said that you have martyred the son of fatima you have killed the son of fatima radiyallahu anha you have made the son of marjana your ruler from today all of you will be slaves by allah the righteous ones amongst you will be killed and those who will remain will be enslaved away be those who are pleased with humiliation and abhorrence he then said oh ibn ziyad i will most certainly narrate to you a hadith which will cause you to become inflamed and angry and furious i saw that huzur atas sallallahu alaihi wasallam had imam hasan radiyallahu anhu seated on his right lap and he had imam husain radiyallahu anhu seated on his left lap and the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam placed his mubarak hand mubarak hand on their blessed chests while he made dua for them saying i give both of them to you and to the pious muslims made dua saying i give both of them to you and to the pious muslims he father said oh ibn ziyad look what you have done with the amana of the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam look what you have done with the beloved grandchildren of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam these enemies at that time while the sar mubarak was brought there they had hazrat imam zainul abidin bound in ropes they had a noose around his neck allahu akbar sayyid as-sajjad hazrat imam zainul abidin radhiyallahu anhu he was in a state of illness he was shackled and bound his hands were tied the women folk were made to sit on camels and only after two days they were made to depart from from from, from the from the plains of karbala they were walking they made imam zainul abidin walk while they rode on horses and camels the pope said ke sawar ghoro par aada piyada shahzada ilahi kaisa zamana ne inqilab kiya while the noble princes on foot on horses are the enemy how the era has rapidly changed oh allah almighty it's something to think about that they had no adab they had no feeling and obviously if they had any adab they would not have martyred the grandson of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is stated that when finally the 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 the, 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 the when when they had left karbala and before they came to ibn ziyad before they were brought there the when hazrat sayyidatuna zainab radiyallahu anha and hazrat imam zainul abidin and the ahli bayt khandan passed by the area in the plains of karbala and the maidan of of of, of karbala where they were when they came out of the tents and the convoy and the convoy was all about to leave towards kufa she said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the durood of the angels of the sky upon you ya rasulullah this is your husain this is husain lying on the battlefield covered in blood from head to foot all his joints have been cut and your daughters have been taken and captured as prisoners and her children are being aligned slain while the wind is blowing dust over them this was her sadness this was her gham this is what she was feeling at that time allahu akbar when these people reached ibn ziyad he was arguing with imam zainul abidin radhiyallahu anhu because he could not respond to anything that imam zainul abidin said whatever imam zainul abidin said he did not have an answer for him he could not respond to anything that hazrat imam zainul abidin radhiyallahu anhu said so he tried 
to have Hadrat Imam Zainul Abdin Radhi Allah made shaheed. He wanted Imam Zainul Abdin to be made shaheed, but Hadrat Zainab Radhi Allah Taala Anha stepped in and she blocked him from making Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abdin Radhi Allah on shaheed. And she said that you will not be able to kill this child. She did not allow them anywhere near Imam Zainul Abdin Radhi Allah Taala An. And Imam Zainul Abdin Radhi Allah then. Spoke to Ibn Ziyad and he said, "Well, in, in brief, and I'm being brief about it. As I said, you can read the discussions in Ayn Akamat in detail." He said to Ibn Ziyad that what will happen to the women folk of this family of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? The rights of Deen, integrity, and Rasulat have been ruined. At least have some decency and think about the family of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who will see to them after me? After all of this, Ibn Ziyad. Decided not to make Hadrat Imam Zainul Abdin Shaykh, but in reality, this was the will of Allah for the family of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to now prosper after that from Hadrat Sayyid Imam Zainul Abdin radiyallahu taala an. The Sari Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiyallahu taala an was then taken taken from Kufa, and it was now taken towards Yazid's court. Towards Damascus, towards Syria, they put the heads of Imam Hussein and the Shahada on spears and carried them as they walked. For those who do this thing on the tenth of Muharram, carrying spears and poles and putting artificial and 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 and, and making things on them as if they are carrying heads, let them know that this behavior was the behavior of the Yazidis. This is not the behavior of the Husseinis. We should be very careful of this and differentiate between who are the Ahl Sunnah and who are not the Ahl Sunnah. It is of utmost importance. If not, we will go and fall in the ditch of destruction with them as well. For those who are crying and banging their chests, claiming to be those who love Imam Hussein Radhi Allah, are in fact the people in Kufa that were responsible for the Shahada of Imam Hussein and those noble mem- members of the family of the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the sacred heads were hoisted on spears. And it is stated that while they were carrying their heads, they passed by somebody who was reciting the Holy Quran, and in that he was reciting the verse: "Am hasibta anna ashab al kahfi wa raqimi kano min ayatina ajaba." In other words, did you comprehend that the ones in the mountain cave and at the edge of the forest were one of our astonishing signs? In other words, they were reciting a verse. The person was reciting a verse from Surah Kahf, the ninth verse of Surah Kahf, and when this was. Recited the Sar Mubarak, the Mubarak head, the Mubarak Sar Mubarak of Hadrat Imam Hussein of the Lawn. He has been made shaheed. His head is on a spear. It is being taken from Kufa to Damascus. When this verse of the Quran was recited by somebody, as the procession was passing there, Hadrat Imam Hussein's head began to speak. It said, "Ya Taali Al Quran, Aajabu min kisatin ashab al kaf qatali wa hamli." Oh, you who is reciting the Quran, more amazing and astonishing and shocking than the narrative of the ashab al kaf, the companions of the cave, is me being killed and my head being paraded. In other words, on a spear. Allah Akbar. The Sare Mubarak of Imam Hussein, after Shahadat, is speaking. It's speaking. This is the shan of the head of Imam Hussein after being split from his body. That the head Mubarak is alive. When this is the shan of the head Mubarak of Imam Hussein, then what is the shan of his grandfather Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Indeed, indeed, ولا تقولوا لما يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحيا ولا كلا تشعرون. And do not say those who have been slain in the way of Allah. To be dead for they are alive, but you are unaware. You cannot perceive. You do not understand their lives. So this, Allah Akbar, this was the shan of the Sar Mubarak of Imam Hussein after even passing from this dunya after shahadat. Okay, whenever the 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 the, the, the details of this have been explained by Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Jalaluddin Al Suyuti radiallahu anhu in his well-renowned book Sharh Al Sudur, it is stated that as they further j- went on their journey and they were taking the Sar Mubarak to. Damascus, a monk, a Christian monk, saw what was happening, and he asked about what they were doing, and they said to him that this is what we have done, and he only heard that they had made shahid the grandson of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he made heard that they had made the grandson of their own Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam shahid, the Christian said, "You are such evil people." He was shocked by this. 
And he said, leave the Sar Mubarak with me for one night. I will give you 1,000 Ashrafis, 1,000 gold coins. In the greed, these were already, as Ustaz Zaman says, these were already the dogs of the world. And they are the dogs of, the, of hell as well. Because that has become the outcome, because they have gone against the Ahl Bayt of the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what did the, they, they find? Obviously they agreed it was about money. It was a thousand coins. So they gave him the Sar Mubarak of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu an. Hadrat Imam Hussain radiallahu an Sar Mubarak was taken by the monk. He took the head of Imam Hussain radiallahu an. He gave it ghusl. He washed it. He removed all the blood that was on it. He applied ether to it. And he kept it on his lap the entire night. And he continued making ziyarat of the Sar Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu an. And he also, like the lady in Kufa, he saw nur emanating from the Sar Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu an. The entire night he spent crying. And in the morning, he accepted Islam, reading the kalima, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He divorced himself from the monastery. He left all his wealth and he spent the rest of his life in the service of the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let me tell you, that monk, them passing him, this was not coincidence, this was the will of Allah. And this is the karamat of the Sareh Mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu an, that even after being shaheed, his head is removed from his body. And when his head is kept in the lap of a Christian monk, when he sees the karamat of the head of Imam Hussain, he accepts the deen of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam fida ka abhi wa ummi this is the shan this is the maqam of the sar mubarak of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an now when morning came the, the head had to be returned the sar mubarak had to be returned and the 1000 gold coins were given the ashrafis were given to these uh, dogs of the dunya and the dogs of hell as well and they took this money and they left, but while they were going on the way, they decided to open and start sharing the money amongst themselves. When they opened the bags, when they opened the bags, they found that the money had turned into pieces of clay. It was not gold anymore, it was not coins anymore, it had turned into pieces of clay. And on one side was written, And never think that Allah is unaware of the activities of the oppressors. And on the other side was written, Okay, and on the other side was written, and very soon the unjust will know to which side they will be turned over. So this is after the Sar Mubarak was given back to them. Now this journey continues and they're taking the Sar Mubarak and going with them where? Towards Damascus. When the sacred head of Imam Hussein radiallahu an reached Yazid, it is stated even Yazid was being very disrespectful initially. He too was, was touching the Sar Mubarak with a, with a stick, with a cane. And it is stated at that time that the ambassadors of the Christian Roman king were present in the court of Yazid. When they saw, and also there were some Yahuds present, Jews present. When they saw what was happening and what Yazid was doing, one of them said that there's an island in one of his, and on it is a monastery. In one of our monasteries there is a hoof, or some say the hoof print of the donkey of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. He said to Yazid, every year we go there, like how we do, like a form of pilgrimage. And we so, show so much of respect to it, like you do to your Kaaba. He says, and you are treating the grandson of your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have treated the grandson of your Nabi in this manner. He said, I'm testifying that you people are on the wrong. You cannot be the righteous people. There was a Jew sitting there. He said, between me and Dawud Alayhi Salaam, there is a gap, there is a space of 70 generations. He said, and the Jews still respect me because of my connection to him. And you on the other hand have killed the grandson of your Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even the Jews and the Christians were saying this. But the Yazidis could not see anything. Eh? This convoy thereafter departed from Damascus to Medina to Munawwara with the women folk of the Ahl Bayt and Imam Zainul Abidin. And Allahu Akbar. We cannot imagine what was the condition of the people of Medina when Imam Zainul Abideen and the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa returned after the shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Ustaz Zaman says that every house was overcome by weeping from the doors and walls, heart wrenching and heart stabbing grief seemed to be dripping. Can you understand? We can never understand and imagine 
what it would have felt like when Imam Zainul Abidin, Sayyid al-Sajjad, stood in the court of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Madinah Sharif. And he was saying, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is how they made your Hussein Shaheed. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what happened to Adi Akbar. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what happened to Ali Azgar. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is how they have treated the Ahl Bayt. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is how they have treated your family. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what would have been the condition of the heart of Imam Zainul Abdin as he wept in the court of beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And indeed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have been saying to him that O oh, Zainul Abidin, I myself was present there. I was the one present there gathering the blood of all the martyrs. O oh, Zainul Abidin. Indeed the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying this to him. Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu anh, was weeping bitterly in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And such was the weeping of Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu an that even for the rest of his life it is said that it was never seen that Imam Zainul Abidin smiled after the battle of Karbala again. After the battle of Karbala, some say that he was once asked about it. He said, if you saw what I saw on the plains of Karbala, even you would not have smiled again for the rest of your lives. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then the family of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained in Madinatul Munawwara in the shade of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now after the shahadat, the discussion after the shahadat and the things that happened after the shahadat are very lengthy to discuss and we, as I said earlier we launched Ayna Qayamat last night, the English translation which is the reflection of the, of the, of the day of resurrection, the English translation of the book Ayna Qayamat. It is online on www.nwrinuri org if you have not downloaded and read it as yet please do as i said earlier that read it for the isla swab of your family members and read it in the love of imam hussein radiallahu and sacrifice your time to 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 educate yourself to gain knowledge because knowledge is power it is the beauty which allows you to understand the deen of almighty allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam so i'm saying that numerous things happen after the shahadat of imam hussein radiallahu ta'ala and and amongst these things it is mentioned, Nusra Azadiya says that in the morning when they woke up, all their buckets, all their dishes, all their pots, all their vessels were filled with blood. They say the sky became so dark that the stars could be seen in the daytime. They say that it, when you looked into the sky, you could see the stars crashing into one another. Abu Sa'id says that throughout the world there was fresh blood under every stone which was lifted. It has been re- reported that it rained blood from the sky and the people's clothes became messed with blood. And when their clothes were stained by blood, it is stated, Abu Sa'id states, that even after the clothes became old and perished after a very long time, it was torn. But the stains and the signs of that never went away from their clothes. The effects never faded away. In places like Khorasan, Damascus and Kufa, it was stated there were bloods all over the walls and inside the homes of the people. The ulama have also said that when you look at the sky, at the sky, when you look at the horizon and when the sun goes down, when the sun sets in the evening, there is a redness in the sky, the shafaq, okay, the twilight. But it is stated that before the shahadat of Imam Hussain, the redness that we see now when the sun goes down was never as red. This redness that we see now, the dark redness only appeared after the shahadat of Imam they say that the edges of the sky remained red for six months. For six months, the edges of the sky remained red, red, red. And thereafter, this redness appeared, which we see today on the horizon when the sun sets. So even that setting of the sun, when you look at every day, and when you see that particular redness, it should remind you of the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain, radiallahu ta'ala an. The great scholars, and as for as, and there, there are numerous other rewrites of what happened after the Battle of Karbala that they could hear the crying of, of the jinns, the walls from walls, the sound of weeping could be heard. There are numerous, numerous narrations. Now, as for those people, those evil ones who partook and participated in this battle against the Ahlabayt of Rasulullah, Sassam, let me tell you, all of them died horrible deaths. The wrath of Allah fell upon them indeed. Now again, time does not permit for me to go into detail. Again, I'm reminding you, read Ayna Qayamat, the details are there. But I'm going to just mention a few narrations uh, to you about what happened there. And then I want to make some important points and some lessons that are learnt from this battle of Karbala. Abu Shaykh reported that some people 
were seated together discussing the, 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 the battle of Karbala and about what happened to people who were responsible in the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anh. He explains that there was an old man that was also seated amongst them and he very proud and arrogantly said that I was also there but nothing happened to me. It is stated that after he said this, he had just got up to go and fix the flame in a lamp, to adjust the flame in a lamp, when the fire overtook him. The fire engulfed him. He went on screaming and shouting, fire, fire, I'm on fire. He went on shouting and he ran into the river, river Euphrates, the same Nahr al-Furat, which they had closed on, closed off to the family of Rasulullah He ran burning, his entire body was burning, he was on fire. He ran into the river Euphrates and fell into the river Euphrates. But even though he was inside the water, his body was still combusting. The fire did not go off until he finally died of burning and entered the fire of hell. This was his outcome. One example of one of the people that was there. As for Yazid, his outcome was destructive and terrible. He died a horrible and evil death. And this was the azab from the court of Almighty Allah. Mansur bin Ammar reported there were people who were responsible for the killing of Imam Hussain radiallahu anh. They would become so thirsty. Those who, especially those 500 people who were sent to close off the river Euphrates to Imam Hussain radiallahu anh and his family. Amongst them, they would become so thirsty in their lives that they could not bear the thirst. They would drink buckets and bags of water, bags of water, but their thirst did not diminish in any way. They died in this thirsty condition. This is what their state was. Imam Waghdi uh, says that there was an old man who was present at the time of the Shahadat of Imam Hussain, but he did not participate. He did not fight in the battle. He was present there, but he did not participate. What happened to him? He became blind. He became blind. Somebody asked him the reason for this. He, saw, he said, I saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi in my dream with his Mubarak sleeves raised up, holding a naked sword in his Mubarak hand. In front were the heads of 10 killers of Imam Hussain. They were lying dead in front. He said, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi showed ghazab towards me, anger towards me. And he said to me that you, by being present there, you increase the number of that army. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then put a single applicator of that blood of the normal Imam into that person's eye and when he woke up he was blind. When he woke up he was blind. They stated there are other narrations about such people. He says that there was one person that saw the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his dream and in front there was a vessel of blood present and people were being brought forth and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stamped them with the blood. When his turn came, he says, I said, Ya Rasulullah, I was not present there. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu said, but in your heart you wanted to be there. In your heart you wanted to be there. And then the beloved Nabi Sallallahu pointed his Mubarak finger towards him in ghadab. And in the morning when he woke up, he was blind. He was blind. This is was the condition of these people. As for Ibn Ziyad, after his death, when his head was lined up with the heads of all the others that were killed, when the vengeance was taken for the shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu the narrator says that he saw people used to scream, it has come, it has come. And everybody used to think, what's coming? And they would look and see that a snake would appear. And it would slither between all the heads of all those evil ones until he reached the head and the nose of Ibn Ziyad. It would go into one of his nostrils, nostril, it will come out from the other nostril. Then it would go into the nostrils and come out from the other nostril. And this continued. It would disappear and then people would scream about it coming back and it would come back again. And this went on many, many times. This was the azab. This was the azab on those people who were part of the shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu anh. Mansur says that I saw a person in, in Syria, in Damascus. His face was that of a pig. He was a human. But his face was transformed into the face of a pig. He said, he asked, what happened to this man? They said that this person used to curse Mawla Ali. And the awlad of Mawla Ali, the descendants of Mawla Ali radiallahu anh. One night he saw the beloved Nabi in his dream. And Imam Hassan radiallahu anh was also in the, in the dream. And Imam Hassan complained about this person. And the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa cursed him and spat on his face. So his face became that of a pig. Allahu Akbar. This is the hal. May Allah protect us. From his wrath, may we be protected from the wrath of Allah. And may Allah keep us away from those who are the enemies of Allah and his Rasul and the enemies of the Ahlul and the Sahaba. 
May Allah keep us away from them and keep them away from us also. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Now there was Mukhtar bin Ubaid Thakafi. Mukhtar bin Ubaid Thakafi was given authority over Kufa in that era of Abdul Malik. And he vowed to avenge the martyrdom of Imam Hussein radiallahu an. And all those who were martyred in Karbala. This he had made, taken a vow, a qasam that he will do. And in fact he did that. He prepared an army, a massive army. And he went out in search of all those that were responsible for the shahadat of Hussain, Imam Hussain of Iran. He found the leaders and the commanders and the instigators one at a time. If he heard that this person fought, he found him, went to his house, got him and killed him. He was the one who killed Amr bin Saad, Holi bin Yazid, Shimar al Joshan, and many others. He had their hands cut off, he had their legs cut off, he had some of them burnt, he, he destroyed those who were part of that army of Ibn Ziyad and Yazid at that time. Almost every one of them who were part of the command and who partook and who instigated this martyrdom of Imam Hussain of the Bayt were hunted down and killed by Mukhtar and his army. Now tell me, all of us will say, what a great service. However, after Mukhtar avenged the slaying of Imam Hussain of the martyrdom, he was caught in the trap of shaitan and he claimed to be a Nabi. Allah forbid. He claimed to be a Nabi. Whatever he had done had gone to his head. And he thought, if I have avenged the awlad of the Nabi, then there can be nobody greater than me. I am a Nabi. He started to say that Jibreel comes to him, brings wahi to him from Allah, etc. When Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubair heard about this, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubair sent out an army against him and he was killed in 67. Hijri. Now, these were the few points I've made about those who were part of the army that went against Imam Hussain of the Lord. And indeed, every single one of them was faced by the wrath of Allah. And those who would not, and those that could not witness what happened, who do not know what happened to certain of them, every one of them would have been punished. And let me tell you, this punishment in the world for such people was only beginning. The rest is in the akhirat, even in the graves, even in the hereafter. These people are definitely in the wrath and in the azab of Almighty Allah. Now, to end today's discussion, I want to or, or, or to or to end the, 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 the discussion on, on the Battle of Karbala, which is a discussion that can never end. But to conclude whatever I've been talking about, I must say that there are some very important lessons that need to be learned from this Battle of Karbala. And I'm going to put, give them to you in point form briefly, inshallah ul azim. The very first thing that we learn from this Battle of Karbala is that Imam Hussein radiallahu taught us that no matter what happens, we should never give our hands in the hand of a corrupt leader. He gave his life and the life of his beloveds, but he did not compromise Allah's deen. He did not compromise Allah's deen. He held firm to the deen of Allah. He gave his life. And this should be a lesson to us that don't make a Wahhabi, don't make a Diobandi, don't make a Ravdi, don't make a Shiai, don't make a Minhaji, don't make the Sulla Kullis your leaders. Don't unite with them. Don't be part of their organizations. Don't make unity groups with them. Don't make unity ulama bodies with them. Do not associate with them for they are the enemies. Do not befriend those who are the enemy of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not befriend those who slander the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not befriend those who slander Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman and all the other Sahaba of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those who slander Mawla Ali radiallahu anhu, any of the companions and the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Hussain taught us that no matter what happens, you do not make such people your leaders, number one. Number two, he showed again the difference between haqq and batil, truth and falsehood. And he showed that haqq never bows down before batil. He did this to set a precedent until the day of Qiyamah, to set a rule until the day of Qiyamah, that we should never, again going back, which will connect to point one, do not make these people your leaders. Do not join them. Do not associate with them. Do not marry them. As per the hadith, when they become ill, do not visit them. When they die, do not pray over them. And do not pray with them. This is what has been commanded to us from the court of the beloved Rasul, from the companions of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three. Imam Hussein taught us, no matter how difficult the situation was, Imam Hussein radiallahu never left his namaz. He never left his salah. When the battle was raging, they performed their salah with him, him and his noble Mubarak followers. And finally, even when he gave his Mubarak head, it was in the state of salah on a Friday at the time of Jum'ah. Think about it. Think about it. 
Those of us that heard about the lecture of Imam Hussein's life last night, wherever we were, those that are reading about Imam Hussein and in the al how many of you definitely performed your Fajr Salah this morning? How many of you have performed your five daily Salah? How many of us leave our Salah without reason? Think about Imam Hussein radiallahu and think about the lesson that he gave on the plains of Karbala. If we claim to be Husseinis, then we should not be leaving one Salah. We should not be making our Salah Qaza without any reason. We should strive to perform our Salah, which is the most important ibadah in the court of Almighty Allah. This lesson was taught by Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an on the plains of Karbala. Number four, he taught us never to read Salah behind those, the namaz behind those who transgress the laws of Sharia. Those who are deviants, those who are corrupt, don't read namaz behind them. He never performed namaz behind them on the plains of Karbala. Today people say follow the larger groups. Huzur Muhaddis Kabir says very beautifully, he says it's Sawad al-Adam, not Sawad al-Akhtar. It is the grand Jamaat, not the big Jamaat in numbers. It's not about the numbers, it is about the grandness of the Jamaat. There on the plains of Karbala, the larger group was 22,000 as per narrations. And here there were 72 with Imam Hussein's side. But Imam Hussein Radiallahu read his namaz with his own jama'at. With his own jama'at. And he did not go to perform behind the 22,000 army. From this it was proven that the great jama'at is the one which is on haq. And not the one with the bigger numbers. Not looking at jubba. Not looking at tasbih. Not looking at topi. Not looking at the azan. Not looking at the ikamat. Not looking at their recitation. It is looking at about who is on haq and who is on batil. And it has been proven from the battle of Karbala. From this non-compromising behavior of Imam Hussein radiallahu an, That the great jama'at is the one. The sawa, the azan is the one which is on haq. And not the one with big numbers. We have learned from Imam Hussein on this battle. That it is not about how many congregants there are. Or how big is that jamaat. It is about who the imam is. If you do the math. 22,000 is bigger than 72. But in reality. 72,000 is bigger than 22,000. 72 is bigger than 22,000. Why? Because 22,000 there on one side. Their congregants meant nothing. The 72 was Mubarak. Because the imam was Hussein. Teaches us a lesson. It's not about how big the jama'at is. It is about who is on the musallah. It is about who is on the musallah. Keep this in your mind. Next point, Mukhtar bin Ubaid Saqafi, the point number five, avenged the slaying and, the fo- and he fought against all those who led the offensive against Imam Hussain radiallahu It was called a great service to the masters of Karbala and to the Muslim Ummah. But in the end, do you know what? He claimed Nubuat. We know he claimed Nubuat. He claimed Nubuat. So Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zabur, Subair did not say that look how much he did. Look, he fought against those enemies. He immediately sent an army and had him killed. Today when the ulama haq ask people to stay away from the corrupt ones, then they say that they did such and such great work in the past. At least give them credit for the good work that they did. But this action of Hadr Abdullah ibn Zubair and the companions of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi teaches us that one is judged on his current condition in such cases. No matter how good he did, but when he goes against the commands of Allah and his Rasul like this, then all the good which he did has has, 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 and the good which he has done means nothing, he will be treated with contempt. Point number six, point number six, and point number seven again, very, very important. Okay, that in the dream, the one person saw the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a sword in his Mubarak hand. And although he wasn't present in the, he, although he was present, he was there. But he did not partake. The beloved Nabi put a single applicator of the blood of Imam Hussain in his eyes. In the morning he woke up blind. The beloved Nabi showed Jalal and Ghadab towards him. And what did the Nabi say? Although he was present there, but he didn't partake. The Nabi said by being there in his dream, the Nabi said by being there, you increase the number of the army. Think about those people who go to the Yobandi places, to the Wahhabi places, to the so-called masjids. Go there and read namaz with them. Go there and sit there. Go there in their gatherings. Go there and befriend them and kiss them and hug them. Tell me what you are doing. Are you not increasing their numbers? You are causing harm to the deen of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember what the Nabi said about did with the person who was there but was not participating. He was just there as an audience. He was just there to look. He was also treated alike. He was treated alike. He became blind thereafter. Point number six. Do not. Lesson being taught. 
do not join the congregants of the bidatis do not join the congregants of these deviants and this gumbra and baddin people because you will be counted amongst them on the day of qiyam point number 7 the last point that i'm going to make here on this discussion that we also know that one person one person who saw the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his dream the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam pointed towards him with ghazab with his finger he woke up blind he was not even there he did not even participate he participate but the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at him with jalal and pointed his finger and he woke up blind why the nabi said because in your heart you wanted to be there be very cautious that do not let your hearts divert you towards the enemy to say oh maybe they are right this is what the sulah kullis do the agents of unholy unity they may not be there with them sitting directly from the back but they are supporting them they are the agents of unholy unity these are the dangerous ones these are the ones that are the worst than all the others because they act like ahlu sunna and yet they are putting the ahlu sunna in the pit of destruction watch if your heart is with those on the day of qiyamah you will be risen with them as well and alhamdulillah 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 your heart and my heart is with hazrat abu bakr as siddiq radhiyallahu an with hazrat umar farooq radhiyallahu an with hazrat usman ibn nurain radhiyallahu an with hazrat ali murtada radhiyallahu ta'ala an with imam hasan and imam hussein radhiyallahu an our hearts are with hazrat sayyidna shaykh abdul qadir jilani baghdadi radhiyallahu an whose gharmi sharif is also tonight our hearts with sheikh abdul qadir jilani baghdadi radhiyallahu ta'ala an our hearts are with sayyidi sarkar e khaja gharib an nawaz radhiyallahu an our hearts are with سرکار اعلی حضرت رضی اللہ عنہ و حضور مفتی اعظم ہند رضی اللہ عنہ حضور صدر شریعہ رضی اللہ عنہ حضور حافظ ملت رضی اللہ عنہ حضور تاج شریعہ رضی اللہ عنہ حضور محدث کبیر حضور قائد ملت او حادث او ود اول دی اولیاء ود اول دی پائیس سرونٹس اف اللہ ود اول دی مشایخ اینڈ ہینس وی ہیو یقین دیٹ آن دی ڈے اف قیامت او حادث اینڈ وی ول بی ود دوز ہوم او حادث ار ود وی ول بی ود دوز انڈر دی شیڈ اف دی بلوور رسول صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اینڈ ٹو نائٹ بینگ دی گیاری شریف اف hazrat e sarkar e ghaus e pak radiyallahu an i'm going to end tonight's discussion and before that dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us all in this world with iman let's us leave this world with iman when the time of departure comes may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from the deviants and keep them away from us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us loyal in the love of the ahl bayt and the sahaba of the beloved rasul ridwan allah ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ridwan allah ta'ala majmain may allah keep us loyal to our mashayikh e karam may allah keep us firm on mazhab e muhazzab mazhab e ahl sunnat maslak e ala hadrat because maslak e ala hadrat adim ul barakat is the path to success it is in this zamana the identification identification and the recognition of the ahl sunnah wal jamaat and it is maslak e ala hadrat radhiyallahu anhu which is passing the true husaini message today this is why it is called maslak e ala hadrat maslak of the ahl sunnah and the identification of the ahl sunnah in this current time i also make dua and as i've said in the past that if i have said anything during these lectures unintentionally or any words came out of my 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 zuban unintentionally or there was a slip of the tongue anywhere may allah taala to the sadq of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam forgive me i beg in the court of allah for his forgiveness and may allah bless you for listening to me and may allah reward me and my family and make maghfirat of my parents and my my elders and all the ahl sunnah for this humble effort which i have tried to make during these mubarak nights and may almighty allah by the sadq of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bless our mashayikh huzur muhaddith kabir and huzur qaid millat and all the ulama haq ahl sunnah wal jamaah with long life and keep their sa'i karam on our heads for a long time and as i said today is the diary sharif of sarkar e haus e azam radhiyallahu anhu and we honor haus e pak radhiyallahu anhu as the imam of, of, of as our imam and the imam of the awliya and we honor him as hasani husaini sayyid and i end today in the paying tribute as well as i end these discussions to the aulad of imam hasan and husain sarkar e haus e azam radhiyallahu anhu with the words of imam ahl e sunnat ala hadrat adim ul barakat radhiyallahu anhu ke tu husaini hasani kyun na mahyuddi ho tu husaini hasani kyun na mahyuddi ho ae khidr majma e bahrain hai chashma tera nabawi mi alawi fasl batuli gulshan nabawi min adal alawi fasl batuli gulshan hasani phool husaini hai mahkana tera nabawi zil alawi burj batuli manzil hasani chand husaini hai ujala tera nabawi khur alawi koh batuli maadan hasani laal husaini hai tajalla tera 
तेरी सरकार में लाता है रजा उसको शफी तेरी सरकार में लाता है रजा उसको शफी जो मेरा हौस है और लाडला बेटा तेरा दैट हौस है पाक हु इज फ्रॉम द औलाद ऑफ द बिलवर रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम हु इज देयर इट्स एज पर दैट व चाला हजरत सैद की तेरी नस्ल पाक में है बच्चा बच्चा नूर का तू है एने नूर तेरा तू है एने नूर तेरा सब घराना नूर का क्या बात रजा उस चमनिस्तान करम की जहरा है कली जिसमें हुसैन और हसन फूल हमालीबलाकम वरम्ह वबरकू